coming in 2022 and beyond. At Ripple, we're building Liquidity Hub. Once launched, Ripple's Liquidity Hub platform will enable companies to seamlessly access crypto from a variety of venues. The product will support a turnkey integration and allow companies to offer their end customers the ability to buy, sell, and hold crypto. Enterprises will be able to maintain separate accounts via Ripple's custody solution and monitor and analyze transactions through a comprehensive dashboard. But that will be just the beginning for Liquidity Hub. As a leading liquidity platform, it will enable many additional enterprise applications for crypto and serve as a cost-effective way to source a variety of new and cutting-edge crypto assets. Join us for this exciting journey as we explore new horizons and applications of crypto. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan, and that was a portion of the Ripple Liquidity Hub video. It's a promo for interested enterprise users who wish to join the waitlist. It does have a direct tie-in to the digital asset XRP, and I'm gonna explain that in this video. We're also gonna take a look at the crypto market, how the Asian markets in the traditional markets closed, and gold, and why a centralized exchange is, well, can be a very scary place. And did the SEC versus Ripple case disappear from the Securities Exchange Commission website? <laughs> so many crazy tweets and videos on this. I want to weigh in. And Biden's crypto executive order, well, there's some leaks. And that order is coming this week. So let's get right to it. All right, we really want to talk about this liquidity hub. This is the core of this video. Ripple published an article today titled Enterprise Applications of Crypto Liquidity. More and more financial institutions and companies are going to want to explore whether to hold crypto on their balance sheets and also absolutely going to consider adopting crypto enabled payments. They also are going to look at how to monetize NFTs. This is also all about the CBDCs because it's unlocking new capital and all of that needs to have liquidity pools. As crypto goes mainstream, these companies and FIs want to do it with confidence because they're really just not pro at this utility on their back end. It's something that fiat can't do either. So they need someone to help them bolster their treasury. And they can do it in things like real-time money transfers. They can do all of this with an enterprise liquidity provider. And that is what Ripple is going to provide. They will be the liquidity partner for multi assets. It's going to be a turnkey solution and it's going to be the Ripple Liquidity Hub. It'll have smart order routing. It'll make available a choice of market makers. It's going to have an OTC desk. That's where you want to buy or sell large amounts, but you don't want to disrupt the market. It's all going to be done through a single API. It'll eliminate pre-funding requirements where you can shop buy, sell, and custody the digital assets. As a crypto liquidity platform, how does XRP fit in? Any transaction globally is a payment transaction. So what does XRP do? It bridges any transaction with two different fiats. It also works for payroll disbursement. It also works for loyalty rewards because those all have built-in fiat transaction opportunities. E-commerce, of course, there's always a fiat component at some point. The XRP ledger is built to handle this, and the digital asset XRP is built for a multi-digital currency world. All right, let's talk a little bit about the markets. The traditional markets in Asia today were all down. The Shanghai, Shenzhen, Taiwan, all off about 2%. And the Tokyo Nikkei 
was off by about 1.7%. The dollar was up against the yen. I have to tell you, the Japanese export market, they love that. Oil up again, like 3%. Boy, I saw a lot of tweets of people who were shocked at the pump in the United States. Uh, I saw prices anywhere from 410 to $6 per gallon. In Japan, it's running about $1.90 per liter, so it's about $6.22. And then when we take a look at spot gold, it is up again, this time over 2000 It's hanging on to that over $2,000 mark. Uh, all of the precious metals are actually up. Silver is up it's trading at 26.21, platinum up 11.44, and palladium up at 29.25. I want to show you something interesting about gold in regards to Russia. It was in 2019 that Russia really began this gold shopping spree, and it has continued. And I think it's also continued within the population because Putin put through a change to a tax free for eliminating the 20% VAT tax in a signed bill for gold. So I don't doubt that some of that demand is coming from this part of the world. All right, at the time of this recording, the crypto markets are mixed. You've got Bitcoin at 38,777, Ethereum, up just slightly, 1.54% at 2576. XRP is down 2.6%, trading at around 72 cents. And waves up again. Yesterday I talked about, about waves um, because they were so strong. Here they are again today, 25% up. They're 200% up in the last seven days. So I did check what is going on. There is a coming listing on Binance. Also, Wave 2.0, the upgrade, is on schedule. And the third thing, which is probably the majority of what's pumping it, is there is a metaverse coming later this month. You know, last quarter, it was anything NFT related. Uh, this quarter seems to be anything metaverse related. And next quarter, who knows? It'll be something else. That's the way this space goes. I'm jumping over to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission website, and people were um, confused, I think, as to why they couldn't find the Ripple case on here. It It, it is here, uh, but it's not in the litigated open cases, nor is it in the, unfortunately, the closed cases. Uh, where it where it is is um, linked here to the press release that was put out on the 22nd of December. So this is the um, SEC versus Ripple case is what I'm talking about. And so people were uh, wildly speculating that uh, something was going on, but uh, this is, this is um, not that unusual. And I took a portion of uh, the website that talks about their listing of cases online. You can see here that, uh, please note that all the filings associated with a particular listed matter may not be available online. And filings that are made available online generally are posted within five business days. If you wish to review filings that are not online or you want to request information that has been redacted, you can submit a Freedom of Information Act, an FOIA request. <laughs> well, we all know how those requests go. Uh, they're <laughs> not so easy uh, to get your answer with, as we've seen uh, in other cases out there. But um, it is true that not all are going to be available online. So it is listed from the press release page, but yeah, it doesn't show up in the open litigated cases by uh, date. Okay, I think we've got that straight now. So we have a, a interesting article that came from Politico. They usually have some pretty good sources and they are talking today about the crypto-centric executive order that's coming this week from Biden. Somebody who's very close to the, to the uh, source is telling Politico that 
This is the starting gun, and it will stop short of directing policy. It will include these studies that are going to be requested over the next nine months on CBDCs, also a study to the environmental impact of digital assets, and then another study that how digital assets affect our financial stability. So a lot of studies, but um, yeah, no direct policy. So I think uh, what everybody was worried about, I don't think is a big concern. The following is just a 30 second message to everyone today. Um, hacking is going to be on the rise. I was reading an article today by On Lab. They said that 1.7 million cyber attacks are occurring every day, 84% of them are basically fake emails containing malicious codes trying to steal important data. But what I want to say is that if you've got uh, your digital assets sitting on exchanges, centralized exchanges, that you're not farming, you're not staking, you're just hodling there, do consider getting yourself a good wallet and put it in cold storage if you don't have any plans on selling anytime soon because I just want everyone to be safe out there. So we are going to jump to the fluff. And today I wanna to talk about Koma Inu. These are sometimes called lion dogs. Uh, they're always in a statue pair at the front of a Shinto shrine. And in Japan, sometimes even in the front of a Buddhist temple. But what I want to show you is the Ah, with the open mouth here to the right, and mm. So one has an open mouth, one has a closed mouth. They are representing the first and last letter of the Sanskrit alphabet, ah, un, and the beginning of all things and then the end. That is the symbolism. And when you say together, aum, I think you might hear some people use that um in a meditation that is uh some of the connections to ah un it originated from the tang dynasty in china that would be back from the 618 to 907 ad period in our history this is a very just very typical look of the two koma inu that are in front of the tori gate and the lion in Asia is thought to repel evil, but also in the Shinto shrines or temples, they are serving as guardians. So I want to show you a very interesting contemporary version. This is part of the artist fair that happens in Kyoto every year. And what they do is, is they use the public spaces to exhibit work from the local artist. In this case, we have two Koma Inus in a very futuristic design. And the two are called the Guardian Beast. I just want to uh, play for you a little bit of that video that has um, the making of these, which has been created by an art teacher, Yanobe-san. And he is uh, doing a lot of different versions in this kind of scale. Uh, this is at a very, very famous old Kyoto temple. It'll be on display until March 13th. And maybe my final point to bring out is this amazing quality that Japan has in the way it embraces its old traditional history but yet can blend in the brand new. It is seen over and over again, and it just fascinates me. Anyway, these are pretty darn cool. I really like them. Look, at it almost looks like there's flames coming from his boots. Very nice, right? Powerful presence. I'll put a link to this video in the description below if you're interested in taking a look at the process. It's a, in a very sped up version, but it's interesting how he 
uh, created them for sure. All right, and it's got some great, great uh, visuals for the old temple too. This is um, this is a temple that is on the uh, historic. It's on the um, oh help me out. You know when when it gets on the heritage list, <laughs> can't pull it out of my brain. Uh, it's uh, UNESCO. <laughs> it's on the UNESCO site, so there is a. Uh, yeah, a lot to see at this temple. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.